Good evening. Good evening. Uh, tonight I'm going to go ahead and go through a few texts in Ephesians chapter 4. Last Sunday, Brother Given gave us an excellent sermon on edification, so I had me thinking about it this whole last week. And me and my dad have been talking about it a, quite a bit last week, so I just want to share with you a few things I've seen tonight. And tonight, as we come together as a body, we come on these select days of the week. It could be said that we come with a specific intent to build one another up in the faith, to be strengthened in our faith, to be strengthened in the might of our inner man by the Spirit working through the things that we have brought to the assembly to say. So, we make a conscious effort to make our service devoid of anything that would detract from the profitability of our time together. Mm -hmm. As is stated in 1 Thessalonians 5.1, Paul says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also do you. Mm -hmm. So we don't see edification as some kind of mere bonus. We don't see it as a benefit that isn't entirely needed or dependent upon. The confidence and joy that comes from a result of fellowship with one another in the truth, being built up is one of the prime motivators that drives a person to go on to glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. So getting into our text, I want to first look at Ephesians 4.1. Paul says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Now, when considering this, it's important to see that the reason why we place such a high regard in edification and why we apply ourselves to be excellent in everything that we do, making it as profitable as possible, is due to our awareness of the goal or purpose of our lives on this earth. Amen. Our vocation Amen. or calling is one that requires absolute resources that are not attainable by one who is entirely dependent who is not entirely dependent upon God. Mm -hmm. This past week, as I was considering this, I kind of began to realize how entirely devoid this whole modern Christianity movement that we have is of this reasoning. And that is because most of the messages that I've heard are primarily exhortations, and there's no exposition. Mm -hmm. And although exhortation mm -hmm. is necessary, we have certain obligations in the mm -hmm. New Covenant. They're all things, as a believer, that you must do. Mm -hmm. But it is entirely unprofitable to exhort a people who aren't edified. Yep. By means right. of an example, this would be like plugging in, uh, having a conversation with your lamp and telling it why you need to light up. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you lighting up, lamp? You, you're supposed, your purpose is to create light for me. Until you plug that lamp into the wall, it's not going to create any light. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the people who are not being edified are forced to see salvation merely on the basis of what a human can do. Mm -hmm. yep making it impossible for them to measure up. To continue to exhort such a person would do nothing but dash their confidence even further. To be sure, such people, the exposition of the things of God is necessary for them to be able to be strengthened in their faith. Instead of telling people that they ought to obey commandments, telling them what they ought to do, this or that, you can tell them that they can do all things through Christ, which strengthens mm -hmm. them. Edification comes when a person continues to be strengthened in believing. It comes when a person continues to allow Christ to work through them. Exhortation, then, is merely not merely telling a believer what he or she should do, but is directing them more thoroughly into the work that Christ is doing in them. And is aiding them to be more fully become transformed into the image of Christ by revealing another area in which Christ can work in them. This is why I think it's especially appropriate the way that we have our services here is that first a brother comes up to expound the word. Mm -hmm. First the doctrine is preached. First we hear about the gospel and we hear about the implications of the gospel. Now that we've become edified, we are able to be exhorted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13, the, the latter half of our text here, he says, He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Christ, mm -hmm. till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, mm -hmm. and to a perfect man, and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we can see the way that Christ is working through the church here. So this Amen. evening, brethren, let's all give heed to the words that are be, to be spoken to us, that we might hear Christ expounded and then be exhorted to more fully allow Him to work amongst us. Mm -hmm. Amen. 